Hey, Sean, your driveway looks great. Yeah, really pleased to. with the results. You um, need to let us know who who did that for you. Yeah, some, see if we some can neighbor it. just came and dragged the hair around, and it looks gorgeous. Hey, and it did lighten up after the after the rain came. Absolutely. The dirt was uh, filtered down through the rain, and now we have a nice, beautiful white driveway. Thank it, you. It, it does. It looks good. Hey, today we're here to till. We're going to till two different gardens for you, right? Yes. Let's get started. John says there's a lot of rocks on down here in this section. So we may hear some rattling and banging on my brand new tiller. Should have brought my old tiller to fill all these rocks. Yeah, this section right here, I think it's naturally a gravel, not pit, but they come back year after year. We clean them out year after year, put them in the driveway actually. Um, and then after a few rainfalls, they will come right back. Oh, wow. It's amazing. It's amazing how flat it makes it nice and smooth. So this is going to be perfect for planting. And it's powering through those rocks. You know, a lot of people talk about getting a five foot tiller on there, Johnny. I don't think I have any interest in that. This four footer is all I can handle at this point. So I've done this by hand every spring and fall for 10 years. Part of the garden here, I actually tilled with that tiller and it's old, the belt slipped, so this is actually something very needed. Moisture level's about perfect. Looking good. A lot of rocks out here. It's really working the organic matter that is on the surface into the soil. So how long did it take you to do this by hand? Oh gosh, I would do it twice a year in the spring and in the fall, and probably a good two hours, because you're going a foot at a time, back and forth. Um, so it, it, was, it was hard work, and probably not achieving the depths that this could, because the, the the tiller itself couldn't get through that amount of soil. So most of the organic matter, like the vines, I pulled out and burned. Okay. Certainly some of that is in there and it's just, there's no sign of them. They're just ground up and yep. into the soil. I couldn't do that. They would actually clog up our tiller. So oh. I, I had to remove the vines. Something like this will just snap them or cut them our tiller would just clog up and stall up. Okay. So what all are you planning to plant in here and do with this garden? Uh, the front end is where you'd get the vegetables. Uh, my wife kind of oversees all of that. The cucumbers, the tomatoes, the peppers, the squash. And we usually put a, a deer fence around it all. Okay. But really, uh, probably 75%, if not more, a few years ago, just for fun, we put in some pumpkins, and we didn't realize pumpkins produce that much. So we had an excess of them, and we decided to take them up to the road and just create a little pumpkin stand. It was something fun for the kids to do. They were involved in tilling and planting and tending the pumpkins, and then, of course, picking them, cleaning them, and then marketing them up on the stand. So we did that as a way for them to make money as kids. And each year got a little bit bigger, and they made a little more money, and we kind of kept expanding it. And this will actually be the 10th season we're doing it. Uh, they're all older now. A couple of them have jobs. So it, it's become more of 90% of our labor. OK. Uh, but I enjoy doing it. And it's fun to interact with customers. We now have people who say, oh, we get our pumpkin here every year. So it's kind of fun to see those people once a year. And they like the fact that it was you know, made here, not bought in a store. Um, several people have come down and says, hey, can I take a look? And I said, absolutely. So they'd come down and see where their pumpkin was grown. And this year, with your help, with the expansion of the area over there, um, we're probably going to do a lot more goose gourds. We tried those out, and those were a huge hit this year because I used, uh, instead of spray paint or keeping them natural, I used uh, furniture stain. And okay. people were just like, wow, I've never seen this before. So something I kind of stumbled across, probably sold about 100 of them this year. Wow. And we're completely basically out, so uh, unfortunately we won't have inventory to sell, 
crops, but we got to replant them, let them dry over this coming winter, so next year we'll have a fresh crop. So are you going to plant more this year than you did last year? Yes, I mean, I mean, we're going to probably uh, more than double our space, and we'll dedicate probably this area to the variety of goose gourds. They're just so unique and fun, and uh, you can do various crafts with them, so that's what people like, and a lot of people like buying them uh, unpainted or stained, and you know, I give their, let their kids do it themselves, so it's given parents ideas of, hey, this could be a fun thing to do with the family, so. The other great thing about this is the nice, clean edges. I yeah. could never accomplish that with the tiller. Okay, and I've heard those walk-behinds are a workout. Yes, it was always uh, something I did not look forward to. Very hard work, especially in this rocky soil. Well, that took you maybe 15 minutes, and that would take me about two hours in a bad back. Yeah, yeah, That's and phenomenal. honestly, I'm not sure that it would have done as good. In other words, not at all. Walk behind tiller just doesn't do quite as nice of a job. Yeah. What depth do you think this went down to? Well, that's an interesting thing. We probably ought to talk about that because it, how do you measure that? Um, I, I, I should have actually stopped. If I'd have known you were going to ask the question, I would have stopped uh, one pass sooner because what we would see is is that once the dirt is fluffed up, it piles up two to three inches, mm -hmm. right? Because of it just being being fluffed up so much. So some people dig back down in their track and they say, look, I was tilling six inches deep. Well, I don't think we were tilling near six inches deep. Yeah, there's six inches of fluffed soil behind the tiller, mm -hmm. but I think it's probably about three inches. Yeah. But all the organic depth. matter that really tilling, you want to put it back in the soil, with the tiller we had, it just wouldn't really stay in there. Or uh, we have a lot of pumpkin vines, so I had to actually remove that organic matter because the tiller couldn't handle it. It would just clog it up and stall it. This just chopped them up and now they're part of the soil. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a composting all in one step, right? I mean, no, you don't have to take it off, let it rot for a year and become soil and then bring and put it back on. You can just chop it right up. That's, that's why I like uh, this tiller is because I can chop things up. Yeah, vines. We One of the previous episodes, we took this big old pumpkin and just, you know, it chopped right in, right, with yeah. the... Is that good enough, or do you think we need to go over it again? I, I think that's fine. Okay, now you've got another garden you want us to, to take a look at. Yes. Another gonna be garden. It was just a field for many years, but this year we're just going to take one section and expand the garden because the demand for goose gourds was tremendous last year. We actually sold out of them. I just have one or two left and we want to dedicate that whole area to growing a variety of different goose style gourds. I don't know what a goose gourd is. I'll show you. Okay, big business in gourds, guys. <laughs> well, this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. This was chisel plowed, looks like last fall, and it'll just be horrible. There's no way I can till it going this direction, but yet Sean's wanting to line up with that straight part, so he only wants a portion of it as a garden. So I think I will be like a cowboy here and, and ride crossways across it one time to kind of line this up and then we'll uh, work from there. Maybe I can get, maybe maybe I might even do two passes there so that I can at least have a little spot to turn without tearing up my back. Well, it's never been tilled. Uh, it's been chisel plowed and then a harrow pulled behind a tractor, but this will probably be a little coarser, I would think, just because it's never been finely ground seems to be making a nice row and that's going across the peaks and valleys. I right. think he's going to switch up and go with the peaks and valleys uh, for a smoother ride. A little bit of a smoother ride right now. Yeah. Because this used to be a horse pasture. Um, my brother-in-law says this has been some of the greatest yields that he's had even though it's only an acre and a half of farmable land. So what has kept you from buying a little tractor? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Maybe the uh, somewhat fear of the unknown, not of the tractor, but just all the various implements. And okay. I've, I've driven a lot larger tractors. I've done the big farm tractors, so I, I guess I don't have a good answer. And a lot of this has evolved. We didn't really plan on the pumpkin garden or expanding it or doing some of the things we've done around here, but now I'm seeing uh, just how quick and efficient and proper these tractors and implements that you use uh, work. It is still really tearing through this ground. 
and I know he's, he's coming across a few bigger rocks, but that doesn't seem to harm it. What's interesting, I want to see how this performs in this section. This is always the last part to dry. Okay. So this will be the wettest soil. Um, we can see a little bit of moisture. I don't think it's soupy by any means. And this looks pretty dry what he's fluffing up. But I want to see how it works in the thicker, wet soil. If it mucks up or if it really fluffs it up like this. So does your gourd business pay for itself? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> not, not my labor cost. It's a labor of love. Okay. Um, I have no idea if I'm pricing them right. People seem to be happy with the price. Nothing's really expensive. I just enjoy doing it. Okay. So it's kind of therapy for you. Yes. Oh, definitely. I needed a hobby and I kind of just fell into that. For the first few years, this whole space was just left meadow. That's how it was. And we had a friend who had miniature horses, not ponies, but actual, that's their breed, Another miniature horse. So for several years, there were horses uh, roaming out here, just grazing and fertilizing. So it really was virgin soil for crops. And he did, he's done corn and bean rotation maybe for four years now. And, and every year he's had an excellent crop comparable to the land around us, which he farms that's been farmed for years and years. I should have brought Johnny Five over with a disc, just this whole thing first. So now he's working in the section that's traditionally the wettest, where we'll have standing water. Um, the soil's a little bit darker, but it's it's powering right through it. We'll literally place coffee can down. The dirt will be in it. It just helps with the weeds, and then poke a few holes and pop a few seeds. It really won't be that hard. 90% of the work is the soil preparation. The coffee can helps a little bit with some bugs and also keeps the roots intact for early watering. Everything's there and then it, it grows underneath it. Uh, it's an open-ended coffee can. We, we cut the, the bottoms off. Okay. So uh, the roots then, then grow down and deep into the soil. It's a good way for them to start. And then if we do have a drought, we put sticks in the coffee cans because eventually the whole area will be covered in vines and okay. you can't even reach it. Okay. So with a, a stick or a PVC pipe, I can take a hose and, and point to the general direction, um, water the, the pipe, I know I'm watering the plant. Still a little clumpy, but that's to be expected. This is the, the wet section and up there is probably really fine dirt. But this did an amazing job for being fairly moist. It's amazing how much better this looks after the second pass. How long does it take for one plant to clean it and get it to where you're ready to stain it and then stain it. Are you talking an hour for that for one or? You know, th they kind of have a little bit of a mind on their own, even within the same variety. There's some that just dry naturally and the skin flakes off and you could almost with light sandpaper clean them up in a few minutes. There's other ones like the caveman clubs and I can show you those. There's lots of grooves and to clean those can take forever. Okay. but they're very unique and special. So, uh, but even within the same variety, uh, some skin is just different. And I've noticed when I was staining them, some of them take the stain very well, and then others, it, it, you have to really work it or it doesn't get as dark. So I get a, a variety of different shades that are unique to that particular gourd. I, I haven't figured out the rhyme or reason to why that happens. Wow. So some are quick and some, some, are, some take a long time. And some of the some of the ones I just leave natural because I don't want to do the work and sell it for less. And it. if somebody wants to clean it up themselves, they can they can do it. What's the selling price for a stained one and then for a natural one? I, I we put them into small, medium, and large, and I think uh, it was like four bucks, six, and eight. So all wow. super affordable uh, labor and stain. Probably it's worth more. But the goal wasn't to try to make a million dollars, it's just to put out a nice product and cover our costs and give a little money for the kids. Wow, unbelievable. 
Sean, you got a lot of gourds to plant. Yes. You gonna do this by hand? <laughs> it is, it's actually not too bad. It's a huge space. I would have never have tilled this on my own, so thank you. Uh, but the gourds, they vine everywhere and we'll probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 plants and you just put a coffee can in the ground, it's already fluffed up. We'll mound it up a little bit and put a few seeds in. So the planting is really not all that hard, even though it's a massive space, but that's what pumpkins and gourds require. Okay, so you're gonna have, what, what would you say? How, how far apart will you plant these? Uh, the expert in the family would know the answer. Hopefully off camera she can. Eight. Eight. She says eight feet. Eight feet apart. So she said eight yards. Eight yards. Yeah, okay. that way we only have to plant about three of them. Uh, I get it. Now, eight feet apart. Eight feet apart. Um, so, I mean, we can measure this out at some point and figure that out. But it's... Well, that should be easy because my tiller's four feet wide. So you really, you really wow. probably already have some marks here that uh, I'll charge you extra for that. Okay, good. I want to thank you guys for doing this because we would have never done this. And Liz and I have decided that uh, this is going to really increase the roadside stand and the sales. Um, so we want to donate 10% of our profits this year to you guys so you can pass it on to someone, whether it's your local church, a local food bank or whatever. Uh, charity is near and dear to your heart because we could not have done this ourselves. So that's, well, that's, that's very kind. That's, that's our very thank kind. You to we you. will. We will work on that, and uh, obviously we'll take uh, suggestions in the comments section below as to where we might donate that 10%. That would, that's very kind. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, this, this couldn't have been done, and we would never have done this expansion. I would have probably got a horse and manual plow to do that to keep that going, but this would not never even been on our radar. Now, we had a little bit different soil type on this second garden. I don't know if you know it, but uh, your brother-in-law will. But it's really black and heavy soil down there in the, I will call it the lower garden. It's probably one foot lower than this one. Mm -hmm. This is a, a lighter brown soil. Now, both of them will be great soils in this area. It doesn't, it, it does, but, but there is a difference. There's a significant difference, and, and you'll notice it when you go to work this. This will probably be easier to work than the darker soil. It's just easier to deal with. It, it's, I don't know, but uh, probably a little bit better yield. Yeah for and a lot of things in the darker soil. How did the implement do in the two different soils? It did great in both, really. I was, I, the reason I paused there is I was trying to think, well, how much different did it behave? This becomes a little bit more powdery the, in, the, in the lighter soil than what, what you'll see. You'll see little, little small clods. You know, like the more you till it, the clods just get smaller in the dark soil, and, and it really will become powdery here. Be interesting to hear how that uh, difference uh, comes across in your in the whole season for you. Yeah, I mean this could yeah. pack really hard because we tilled it so powdery, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Now, if 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 I were to have my druthers, we would have a little bit more grass on that edge and this edge. So my request is to to plant the first, I don't know, two or three feet in grass seed. Wow. It's that three-point turn I, thing that gave yeah, you a little, it, it little was, hard time. It's, it's a it's a hard time because especially on that end down there, there's really not not enough for me to turn, you know. But this is not my garden, so you do it the way you want right. to do it. And are you feeling any motion sickness? It was a pretty bumpy ride on the first pass, but the, the pretty, second... First pass was pretty bumpy. Little Johnny here is not the smoothest riding rig around, but uh, it was all right. Second pass was smooth. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got a show of gourd on this channel. Absolutely. Wait till you see this fall, the results. Okay. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. He still hasn't watched enough to join us in on the Tractor Time with Tim. Yeah, you're supposed to say it with him. Oh. But we don't ever tell anybody. We don't ever tell anybody. You're supposed to just well, do it. Well, thankfully, it's still rolling. No, it's too late now. Too late? Once, no, it's, once it's you a, say it a, once, you can't do it again. It's a once and done. One, one and done. I will know for the next time.